what's going on guys all right just like i said in the last couple videos i was going to show you how to make the coolant temp sensor work on the terminator x This is a Ford Terminator X system, so it should work on any Terminator X, uh, to my knowledge. So basically, like I said, I'm gonna be running the uh, the trans temp, basically getting the Holly to see the trans temp uh, through a coolant sensor. So I am using a GM based coolant sensor for this. Uh, it's a five volt sensor, but I'll show you how I got everything wired up and. Uh, all right, so we're gonna apply power to the car. Was well, not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous applying power for the first time. Don't know what to expect. Uh, as y'all may know, uh, found some some burnt wiring in it, but I did pull the fuse to it because we're not gonna be using any of the wiring to the serial ladder. I'm planning on running a new wire to it, but uh. So far, everything's been fine, but got the laptop set up here. You can see I got a voltmeter, got a bunch of wiring here. It's a big mess, and if you can tell or not, got two cups down here. Then I'm gonna show you how uh, a very, the process I've done here to make this work. So first, Dean use a laptop. So first off. Uh, get some light here that light ain't very bright I think battery's going dead in already alright so this black and red wire here is what's going to the temp sensor which you can see or not it's right there but that is what's going to be going to the transmission line so I got running here, which I'll show you more of that in a second. Um, but first, uh, I want to, I want you're 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 going to need a five volt source because the the sensor is five volt. On the Holly kit, it comes a it comes with a power tap, which is this right here off the harness well I don't have a plug right now so what I basically did is I just tapped into the wiring with some connectors here to make it work you see I got I'm pulling a power and negative off the harness here so the positive on the Holly kit is orange for positive and black with a white line is negative so I'm pulling that right off the harness which what you, you really want to do. So my white wire, my white wire here is my positive. I got running all the way up here and I got going into a little resistor here. It's a 2.2 2, uh, K ohm resistor. So it's going right into my power wire into the resistor then it's going right into the signal wire, which is this red wire that goes to the sensor. Um, the sensor doesn't matter which positive was negative, but I did assign it myself, make it easier for myself. I put a black and a red wire here, black for negative, red for positive. And you'll see I have a green wire coming off. That's, um, that's my signal wire I have going to runs my voltmeter here and the ground is ground to ground but I have another ground wire coming off of it going to my own meter as well you can see you can see it or not got that and the green wire is no longer going to the, the voltmeter but to originally set all this up I had to run to the voltmeter so I can get 
the proper voltages I needed to build me a base table. So, before I done anything to the laptop, I made notes. So basically, um, this doesn't need to be, I live here in Texas, so it doesn't very, very rarely gets, you know, very, very cold here. I mean, it, sometimes it, it, it get down maybe in the 30s or so, but the car doesn't drive, I don't drive the car when it's that cold anyway. So, so my base calibration I started at was 44 degrees, and with the voltmeter, you want to put it on DC, you want to use the DCV, and I put it on 20. And so it, it throws out a volt reading, which I can show you here. All right, so I got my green wire here, which would be my signal wire, going to my positive on my voltmeter, which it just came off. And you can see, like I said, I got my negative here on the voltmeter. All right, so I got all the wires separated, so there's nothing to be touching. I'm gonna turn my voltmeter on, like so. And now I'm gonna play power. All right, now you can see it's pulling a volt reading. So I'm getting 2.95 volts, whatever temperature that is. But right now I got the sensor just kind of just laying there. So let me show you when I put this in uh, cold water. See, it's in cold water. See, it's changing. It's probably not going to change much because the sensor is already pretty cold as it is. But next to it, I've already heated some water up in a can. It's a little over 100 degrees, about 100, almost 110. So we're going to put this in some warm water. See how fast it's changing? Like I said, that's about a little over 100 degrees. And I got the sensor right into the hot water. I don't have it like fully submerged, just, just enough to get the sensor. And it's starting to smooth out now. But you see, you get the idea. So I basically did the same thing. I got the water as hot as I could possibly get it, basically past boiling point. And uh, I was able to get these readings. So these aren't 100% accurate. I did, like I said, this is basically a rough draft to basically build a table. And I basically, I, I still had to modify the table to make everything work to get it calibrated in. So 44 degrees, I pulled out a 3.23 volts. Like I said, I used my voltmeter here. Then to the next temperature up, 79 degrees, I pulled at 2.26 volts. And 93 degrees at 1.35 volts, 86 degrees at 1.44, or sorry, 0.44, and 224.39, which I think is a little bit off, might be a little bit lower value on that. But um, I don't remember, I, th I believe it is, I put a lower value in the system here. But this is, like I said, this is just a baseline numbers I got, just to plug it in to Holly and basically build a table with it. So after I did all that, I went and chose an input on the Holly and which I'm using these uh, number two. You can use which whatever you want to use, but this is the wire I'm gonna plug it into. And basically you just monitor the temperature on the Holly, make sure it match my thermo or my thermometer there. And uh, I went to actually went through the whole sweep of temperature, and it's 
pretty close. It's a couple degrees off. It ain't nothing huge. Uh, actually read a little bit higher on the Holly, which is perfectly fine. Gives me a little cushion. But let me show you how I got set up on the Holly. All right, with your key on, you want to make sure your Holly is plugged into the ECU or your Holly software is plugged into the ECU. Everything's already synced already. So, your inputs here, this uh, your inputs and outputs. So this is going to be an input. You can see here I got it labeled as trans temp. It's on five volt. It's enabled, and you'll configure. So basically, this is where you'll configure your table. Um, don't pay too pay too much attention to the values because, like I said, I'm, I basically just got done sort of done calibrating it myself. I haven't changed any of the values yet. But uh, this is the table I've come up with. And it's, so far, it's, it's worked just fine. So like I said, uh, remember that 224 at 0.39 volts? And on here, I got 0.29 volts, which sounds, li sounds a little bit better. Um, like I said, like those numbers I got was just a rough estimate to get this table built. And my lowest point is 44 degrees. My highest point is 224 degrees. Hopefully, I don't have to see the transmission up that high. But the value is there if we need to. If it's if we need to read it. But uh, this should work for what I need. So, right now, I plug, I undid the signal wire, which is be my green wire here, off the voltmeter. And I got on an input. So, the ECU is on and everything. We're just going to go and look at the temperature, see what it says. So, on a gauge here, I changed, I changed the imp or the, what it reads. You can see trans temp. Showing 92 degrees. And on my thermometer there, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's hard to see. Sorry about the lighting, guys. Shows about 92 degrees on there. So it's very, very, very close. Um, and it should work for what I need to do. And if you want to do this hack, uh, you're more than welcome to do it. That's why I'm showing you this, how I'm doing it. Uh, and if you want me to build you a harness, I can build you a harness. I got a bought a box of these resistors for like literally like five, six bucks off of Amazon. I got like a hundred of them. I only really need one or two. So if, if you want to do that, uh, hit me up. I can I can obviously I can I can build you something for the Holly. Uh, what else? I plan on doing the fuel system the same way, the fuel level. Um, you can also you can pull any 5 volt off the power tab uh, won't split it won't mess with anything else uh, but if you do it to like a like I said a coolant sensor or a temp sensor or like on the engine you can't do that because you'll be splitting I guess you call it splitting the resistance whatever and just throw the rings completely off on a 5 volt it will not do that uh, you can split it uh, as many times as you want and it'll work fine uh, so yeah um, I'm gonna get this clean. I'm gonna build myself a little harness here and uh, Hopefully I can show you the finished results of the temp sensor All right guys, so I want to wrap up this video uh, on the sensor so got our thing uh, Situated I made myself a little harness here You can see the wires going to the holly. I Got the resistor here. I got it with some uh some heat shrink tube on it i put a little uh like a toothpick in it cut the ends off so you know sharp edges but uh put that in the middle so the wire doesn't bend and uh break off the uh resistor so like i said i just made myself a little harness here and everything works pretty good i uh, still need to heat shrink this tube but i still need to take care of the fuel sending unit um, 
I don't know if I told y'all, but I'll be doing that the same exact way I'm doing with the, the sensor here. So I'm just gonna, gonna take the 12 volt off here in the in the ground. And uh basically likes to do the same way, get the voltages, voltage readings and everything. I already pulled the voltage reading off the tank empty, so I just got those 15 gallons of fuel in it, and I'll get my full reading with that. Um what else but yeah uh, this is basically done I just need to just tuck it away and all now I need to stick the sensor in all right so I'm gonna show you where I got the sensor at so here's my wiring my plug I got some of this wiring here kind of just unraveled just so I can extend this wire as far as I could to do my test So I don't know if you can see that or not, right there. That's where the sensor's going. Just gonna go into that and uh, plug it in and we'll be ready to roll. All right, well there she is. Got it all tightened down, plugged in. Now we're ready to throw some transmission fluid in. See how well it works. All right, guys, gonna wrap up the video here. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, it's a cool little hack. Um, feel free to, to try it out for yourself. Let me know how it works for you. But gonna wrap up this video here. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. But until next time, I will see y'all later.